Welcome to Disrupt, a series about Canadian artists who are movers and shakers from the disability community. I'm your host, Taylor Olson, he, they pronouns. That's right, two scoops, just like a great vanilla ice cream cone. And I'm a bisexual filmmaker from Halifax, Nova Scotia, living with a history of eating disorders and CPTSD. This is our fourth and final episode, and we have an exciting mix of theater, dance, and music videos for you folks. But we're going to start off with a different kind of video, a poetry video. It's by poet Charlie C. Petch from Toronto, Toronto. Charlie is an award-winning, transmasculine, multidisciplinary artist who writes inspiring poetry and performs their pieces live. What more could you want? Charlie confesses they're a bit obsessed, obsessed with trying to explain what it's like to have a migraine as a result of a brain injury. Here's their video. Oh, a migraine. How I experience the world now is that all of these little moments of light, of you know LED Christmas lights, of a bike light, of any of the sun going through trees, um, that all becomes like, it's almost like I have, uh, like there's like Alpha Getty is getting poured into my brain and I have to do gibberish to get it out, all the mushed words and letters. It's like I have to uh, wear a sleep mask sometimes. This is a great one. They hold it up. Oh my gosh. On the subway, in between stations, when the, you know, the lights are whipping by, I can't process it anymore. It makes me feel like Superman with kryptonite, or like I'm going to pee, or like I'm going to do gibberish in front of people. That happens a lot, especially with a bike light. Ah! will happen. People laugh. I'm a funny person, but it doesn't feel funny in the moment. Anyway, how I process and how I cope uh, is to do gibberish. Sometimes I, um, I do it spontaneously and sometimes as the alphagetti gets, you know, poured into my brain, I just have to find a place to let it out sometimes. And so here is a sample. I want to do a little sound poem for you of all of my favorite gibberish sounds. If you would like to join in, I would totally welcome it. It is very relaxing. So we'll start off uh, with the first one. It's like an F. F, 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 F. There's something about the buzz on my lips. I'm going to do a little recording of it. Here we go. They make noises into a microphone before them. They lean back a bit. Yeah, and then uh, let's do another one. So this is um, sort of like a horse sound. Who doesn't love horses? Um, here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. They smile. Okay, and then and then we do like P's and T's and C's and yeah, it's all over the mouth. It's from like from like the back of the jaw to the front. So. Um, Oh my gosh. Honestly, I almost fall down when I'm doing this piece. It just, it's so relaxing. Okay, one more, one more. This is the uh, dying bird, I like to say. This is generally. You know, when a bike light's coming at me, uh, my involuntary uh, reaction is to go, ah! They twitch in place, ah! their mouth opening wide. Ah! 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 Oh my gosh. Ah! So many. Nice. Ah! 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 Oh! I forgot to tell you the name of this poem. It goes, uh, it goes like this. <clears throat> oh, a migraine. That's like a headache, right? A migraine. That's like a headache. 
They move the microphone aside, then lean back, looking exhausted. They pull the sleep mask over their eyes and feign falling asleep. They shift around. They touch their face. They slowly lean forward, out of frame. If you loved that as much as I did, you might want to check out Charlie Petch's audiobook from Brick Books. It's called Why I Was Late. I can't wait to give it a listen. Now, if you like hip hop, then you'll love our next artist, Jordell Downs. Jordell was blind as a result of retina pigmentosa until he was four years old when he regained 20% of his eyesight. As an artist, Jordell's unusual. Unusual in that he's a hip hop artist in a location where that's a pretty rare thing. Want to guess where? If you said Sudbury, Ontario, you'd be right. Here's his music video, War With The World. Jordell raps on and around a tank on a hill overlooking a river and railroad tracks. He wears a camouflage t-shirt and pants. War With The World. A Sherman tank stands in a clearing. Jordell Downs, D-O-W-N-Z music.com. Jordell approaches the tank at Jor underscore Dell underscore Downs. He sits leaning against the back of the turret. I think I'm Mr. Unpopular. Some say that opinion ain't popular. That might stir the pot to be honest, bro. But that's after these problems keep popping now. I vanished from where I was standing. I'm looking for understanding. They think I'm way too demanding. Rather not do it the way that they planned it, yeah. All this time at the top of the bottom of the barrel I spent, yeah, yeah. I loved that. Beyond being a hip hop artist, Jordell also produces and acts as sound engineer on his recordings. Pretty inspirational. Makes me want to go shoot a music video right now. What do you say, Jordell? A collaboration? We're only getting started. Buckle in because we have more amazing artists to introduce you to when we come back on Disrupt.
Welcome back to Disrupt. Now to a video that started out as a stage production. It's called Mind to Hold, and it's an edgy, sexy piece that was created with the help of Tracy Foster and Diane Olette during COVID lockdown. They're a perfect example of teamwork making the dream work. Tracy and Diane are part of Saskatchewan's only disability-led organization, Listen to Dis. Now, listen to Dis. That's not love. A man leans against a porch rail. Power's a bitch. Especially when you don't know you have it. A swaying person appears reflected in the door. I should have known I needed to end it. I should have seen it coming. It's just the domestic violence like I had learned it didn't look like that. What did it look like? It looked like a man hitting a woman. Not two disabled people fighting over dirty dishes in the sink, and her... Pushing you out of your chair. A woman with long hair fades in, then out. I didn't leave right away. He rolls backward on a paved pathway. I think I was scared to be alone. He sits smiling in a clearing, his wheelchair behind him. I'd found out what being loved in a relationship felt like. A butterfly zooms past. That's not love. In a split screen, he and the woman <laughs> smile. The wind blows her hair. He again leans on the porch rail. I know that now, don't I? The door reflects the woman swaying. For our next artist, Megan Taverner, a wonderful dancer from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Megan has been moving to music since they were four years old. But just as Megan was turning pro, they were diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. In this interpretive dance piece, Megan uses the image of a firefly to illustrate what it's like to live with their illness. Cue the tape. A person in a wheelchair leans forward. She sits up, rolls her shoulders back, then splays her arms to her sides and crosses them over her head. She swings her right arm to her left, then pulls it back while extending her left arm. She drops her hands and sits up. Her hands crawl up her torso and face, then swing to the back of her head. Her fingers crawl to the front, then cover her mouth. She swings her joined hands left and right, grips them together, pulls them apart and back together before her, before separating and dropping them. She swings her right arm to her left and her left arm to her right, before covering her mouth and pulling her hands away. She watches something float up and away, before swinging her arms out and above one more time, then leans forward. Megan now teaches at an inclusive dance school, the Kate Stanforth Academy of Dance. Gorgeous work, Megan. I should hire you to teach me a few moves. Yes, I'm dancing again. No, I'm not any better. I'll stop. Not to get all sentimental on you right now, but I find these artists and their voices incredibly inspirational. The future is right here, folks, and these artists are paving the path. All right, last but certainly not least, you'll meet Dev Ramsaywak next when we come back on Disrupt. You're watching Disrupt. On to the final artist of our series, Dev Ramsaywak. Dev is a disabled, non-binary artist. They write, make films, and work as an audio engineer. What don't they do? This is Dev's video poem, I Found Myself on the Hero's Journey. Dev says it's a battle cry to create change for vulnerable and marginalized people, and I couldn't agree more. Check it out. Dev sports a nose ring, ear piercings, and wears a t-shirt reading, I'm not a boy or a girl, I'm dead. As they recite, various images fade in and out over them, including apartment buildings and alleys, paths in nature, waves lapping on a shore, a bonfire, a guitar player, and blurry shadows. How I found myself on the hero's journey. I want to tell you where I am. I am at a crux in my life, a convergence of work and art and values, an impossible role reversal of reader and hero that crept up on me from all angles, eyes in the trees surrounding my camp when I thought I was just playing Boy Scouts. I thought that I was wandering through the trees using the imagined tracking skills picked up from books and blog posts and late night conversations like curiosity, compassion, and boundaries. I thought I was just any regular kid making up stories in which I'd never get to star, to pass the time waving around broken spindly branches pretending to be a warrior, happy to discover the pretend consequences, never intending to take on the responsibility. But I guess that's how most stories begin. The reluctant hero is thrown into action. I have always been the reader, perfectly content to quietly spectate from afar, at most trading commentary with a friend who equally preferred to read during recess. I was always more interested in reading drama than I wanted to participate in it. I'd much rather learn from somebody else's mistakes. 
but I read storyline after storyline wondering why so many were trying to teach the same lessons over and over again. How do you become a hero if it destroys so much of you? It turns out I never learned my lesson. I want to tell you where I am. It is absolutely terrifying to find yourself exactly on the path you've imagined over and over again when you've passed your time coming up with every variation of the same storyline and where you would fit. Everything feels make or break here. The face of failure haunts your every move, taunting and jeering just behind your ear, telling you that you hold all of its burdens. Your successes are luck and connections in just the right timing, but the failures are all your own. You should know the right moves and you prepared for this, you worked for this. If you fail, it is because you're a failure. I want to tell you where I am. Failure is not an option and neither is quitting. There are so many people being crushed under the weight of their own survival. I can hear them screaming, haunting the inside of my head like a whirlwind of wailing ghosts. Their voices carrying so much pain I can feel it in the base of my skull, my neck and shoulder, along my spine, in the swell of my hip, my knee, my ankle. They are crushed under their own weight, but I am crushed under the weight of all of theirs. I can hear them screaming for change and vengeance and hope and futures. They scream to me because I am being something, changing something, doing something more than they can do, more than they can bear. They ask me to hold their pain, make something with it. They give it to me to hold like power. I am the alien martial artist asking for their power and they are just breathing the assistance I have been asking for. I want to tell you where I am. It is my job to translate the pain. I have to listen to the wails and the cries, hold them inside of myself and turn them into something beautiful. I cannot just listen to them, let them wash over me. I have to replay them over and over again, fill my days with them, hear their echoes in everything I do. And then I have to mold it, I have to turn it into something else. I have to turn it into change and open doors and make pathways. I have to mount the block of wood on the leaf, get it to spin so fast it becomes a blur. Hold the chisel at the right angle, rounding out the edges until I'm left with gentle sloping curves. An ornate spindle to help support an ornate banister. I am always trying to translate this pain more clearly this time. I make a row of spindles enough to support a banister or two. I keep translating, keep spinning and chiseling because I keep getting applause when I've been screaming for help. I keep getting praise for turning something ugly into something consumable and beautiful instead of getting a hand. I keep getting told to keep talking when I'm trying to have a conversation. It's on me to hold it. I want to tell you where I am. It's so hard to have a regular conversation when pain is creeping up your spine, working its way into your kidneys. It is hard to keep things casual when you have to wonder if the pain that starts when you seem to take a breath wrong somehow is going to be the start of your end. Trying to remember if that pain in your back is new or you're just paying more attention. Trying not to think about all the signs you have to look for if another part of your body decides to fail. Trying not to think about all the lives that taught you how to look for those signs or if your life expectancy matches everyone around you. It is hard to even speak. The words are harder to say. It takes more energy to parse through the things I'm not supposed to say and the things I am. When it hurts, I have to make sure to save enough breath to say what I mean. I can't waste time on things we already know. I only have the strength to tell you what's important. So I say what I can between labored breaths, between winces and flinches I carefully hide. I am Atlas balancing the world between his tense, knotted shoulders, bent at the middle to carry the weight, stopped in his tracks to explain another simple concept again. Whip out another spindle for the banister, start the play again. I want to tell you where I am. So welcome to the show. This one is a performance of the artist Burden. It is a story we have all heard before. From woeful and remorseful prophets, messiahs, superheroes, witches, and vampire slayers. The burden of power. The burden of creating. The burden of seeing the world for what it was. The burden of knowing when the message wasn't received. The burden of not being able to choose something else. The burden of allowing it to become your whole being anyways. And most of you will leave the theater, cold popcorn folded up in a crumpled paper bag as though you're saving it for later, complaining of all these reluctant heroes who whine about the talent and power they have when the rest of the world would kill for it. And I think about leaving, about shutting up forever and saving my screams, about slinking off to the shadows and becoming a growl in the dark, become the angry flailing tentacles wreaking havoc on anyone who dares enter their lair. And then I meet someone with a pain like mine, momentarily relieved, and they smile and they say, I can't describe what that meant to me. I want to tell you where I am. My therapist was an act-up New York activist in the 80s. He spent his youth at the bedsides of dying friends, being beaten by cops and screaming on the streets. He told me that he felt like he was fighting a losing battle. He told me that he wasn't sure he was making a difference. He told me that now he can look back and see that all of it was worth it, that lives are getting to be lived because of it. I couldn't describe to him what that meant to me. 
I'm thinking about this and breathing, thinking about this and thinking about the ocean, so giant and powerful, thinking about tiny incremental changes like the inching crawl of the tide, each wave crashing a little further or a little closer onto the sand, thinking about the tremendous pull of the moon it takes to do that, thinking about all of the creatures that flourish because of that creeping tide. I'm thinking about the phrase, a watch pot doesn't boil. I'm thinking about little touches, little shifts. I'm thinking and I am breathing. I want to tell you where I am. Dev has also created and hosted podcasts like Six Ad World and Jemby that focus on crip representation. Compelling, compelling work, Dev, congrats. And sadly, that brings to an end our series Disrupt. I want to thank all the brave and talented artists who contributed to the show. Your talent, heart, and spirit are beautiful to witness, and we cannot wait to see what you do next. I'm Taylor Olson, and it's been an honor presenting your work. Keep creating, keep taking risks, and keep changing the world. Much love. It's Kelly Rose and DJ Giles. Sound assistant, KJ Lewis. Assistant production designer, Brandon Boyd. Production assistant, Jeff Harrow. Logo design, Daniel Jardine. Legal services, David C. Perlmutter. Inclusive mentorship coordinators, Rachel Bauer, Lynn Matheson, and Teamwork Cooperative. Special thanks, Art Pays Me. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Integrated Described Video Consultant, M. Williams. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.